Fasting in a low-carb diet can do a great deal to normalize your hormones. While medications might be tempting and are sometimes necessary, they can have horrific side effects, especially when taken young. Hormonal medications will seal off your growth plates early, but fasting and a low-carb diet can both stop this from occurring and increase bone growth and height for those whose bone plates have not sealed yet. This also applies to other areas that may surprise you. For these poor devils, it's too late. But there is hope. Here at the Atlanta Genital Institute, Teams of doctors are at work around the clock to cure this dreaded affliction. Your body is an amazing creation, and in general it always does the right thing. The problems arise when you have a non-ancestral diet and lifestyle, and of course damage slowly accrues as we age. Thankfully, fasting and an ancestral lower-carb diet can do a great deal to correct these issues. Maybe you were never a varsity athlete and always a bit lacking in the health department, but if you are under 25, then it may not be too late to change things. Good falls tragically short of encompassing the sheer virtuosity of your performance this evening. Um... Oh man, you know, you just gotta play one game at a time and go out there and give 110% and you just gotta show you want it more than they do when chips fall where they may. While it is commonly believed that bones are made entirely of calcium, in reality the main component is collagen. The biggest thing you can do to ensure bone growth is to eat healthy animal products, especially glycine-rich broth, which is generally the limiting factor in collagen production. Over a hundred years ago, when we actually discovered that when people had high protein diets, there was higher levels of calcium in the urine. And people assumed that that calcium must have been leached from the bones. In actual fact, that is not true. Because when you have a higher protein diet, you absorb more calcium from the diet. So, and if you absorb more calcium, then that means there's potential for more to then leave the body in urine but it's not being lost from your bones. It's just being lost because you've just absorbed more. In actual fact, we have randomized controlled trial level of evidence that a high protein diet can assist in reversing osteoporosis. So there was this study done back in 2002 and they looked at supplementing with calcium and vitamin D and they looked to see whether or not they could actually reverse osteoporosis. They followed people over three years and they did a bone density, a DEXA scan, dual energy x-ray, every six months over that three years. And this was menopausal females and males over the age of 65, I think it was. And what they found that on average, they could slow bone the bone degrading by giving vitamin D and calcium, but they couldn't restore it. And then they did something smart. They said, what happens if we stratify the results based on how much protein people are consuming? And they found that the group that was consuming the most protein actually reversed osteoporosis in their hip bones, reversed osteoporosis. And this is really logical because bone is mineralized protein. It's protein strands that's got minerals embedded within it. So if you're trying to build more bone, you can't just give calcium because that's not the complete ingredients. You need all the ingredients. Bone has protein in it. 40% of the dry weight of bone is protein. So a high protein diet has been shown to be conditionally essential to actually reverse osteoporosis. Protein is good for the bone, full stop. You also need to have plenty of complete proteins, especially from animal sources that are full of leucine Otherwise, protein synthesis simply won't be triggered. So don't bother pouring some collagen into your coffee, especially while you're fasting. It's simply not going to do anything when taken that way. Not only does your body have to break it down to use it, but it is mainly amino acids that are common in the body. But most of all, without enough leucine to trigger protein synthesis, this simply isn't going to do anything. Collagen is a pretty expensive supplement, so make sure that you don't waste it.
In fact, it's better to just take glycine, which will also avoid the possibility of glyphosate contamination, which is a very serious toxin in our environment that causes cancer and is an endocrine disruptor. Taurine will also help because taurine is needed to properly fold proteins, making it critical for all growth, including the growth of bone and muscle. Simply eating meat is not enough to ensure that you get enough taurine either, as it is mainly in organs like the heart and in the small muscles like the tongue and tail that most people simply don't eat today. It's also common in seafood, but you would have to eat it daily to get enough. Generally, people don't stop growing until they're around 25, but this is regulated by hormones, not by how many birthdays you've had. It's actually estrogen which will seal your bone plates over time. And for men, the higher your testosterone, the more estrogen you're going to produce. So generally, you just reach a certain point at a certain age and you'll simply stop growing. The problem is when you have a high carb diet, especially one full of processed foods, and this increases your estrogen a great deal and will prematurely end your growth. Fat also increases SHBG, and by fat I mean fat on your body, not dietary fat. And in men this leads to testosterone being turned into estrogen, and the estrogen being disposed of from the body. It's a little more complicated for women, but in short, obesity will greatly increase the estrogen in women and prematurely in growth, while also prematurely triggering puberty in women. Proper estrogen levels are vital for collagen synthesis, which is needed for bone growth. So if it's too low, then no collagen can be produced at all, and this causes many health issues. If it's too high, your growth plates will prematurely seal, and you'll wind up much shorter than you should have. So artificially changing these levels is going to lead to a disaster in most cases. And that's why teens who take PEDs often never reach their proper height. Someone asked me the other day how to lower SHBG or sex hormone binding globulin. But this is one reason you should not do so in most circumstances. You really need to keep a proper level of estrogen, otherwise you will have many, many problems. And when you're older, it will lead to heart disease and dementia because you're not creating new blood vessels when you're supposed to, and also to very fragile tendons. When you fast, your SHBG goes up and your testosterone and estrogen both go down. But when the fast is over, your levels will normalize to what they're supposed to be. This will also help reduce obesity, and that's going to take away this problem of fat cells causing excess estrogen and leading to sealing off your bone plates early. Fasting will also increase growth hormone, which leads to much more growth at the end of a fast. In long-term studies, people tend to gain lean tissue the more frequently they fast. Even in animal studies where the animals are fasted back to back and they're only eating every other day or even more infrequently, they actually become larger. In humans, eating every other day for six months has been shown to lead to more lean tissue and less body fat at the same time. The participants actually gained lean mass while losing body fat, which is very difficult in the fitness world, and they did it without any exercise. Conversely, fasting also helps reduce benign tumors, which can lead to excessive growth hormone. This means those on the other end of the spectrum who have gigantism can reduce their symptoms through fasting. Whatever your issue is, fasting is going to help to normalize and heal the body, and it's going to give you a result that's healthier. In animal studies, they typically keep the animal to a schedule of fasting for their whole life, and they see nothing but benefits. This includes better body composition, more muscle, less fat, and an overall larger animal that also lives longer. Fasting could also help for your size in other areas as well, which is determined by hormones while still young. The main problem men have with this issue is a tumor that leads to lessened secretion of testosterone and fasting can help reduce these tumors and normalize these issues. Though, of course, if you have a serious issue, 
you should go to a doctor and get some kind of hormone therapy if possible. A low carb diet will also do a great deal to keep these issues from occurring in the first place. And this is very helpful because there's no point in being a six foot seven beast if the rest of you is just not proportional. Oh my God. Um, oh! oh God, I just, I remembered there's just this um, teeny, Tiny thing to What's do. What's teeny? Um, no, no, no. It's just uh, something that I have to write. You, about me? Yeah, yeah. Just a, a little short itty bitty blurb. Fasting won't just help with body composition and hormone levels in young men, though. It also helps balance hormones for women. The liver is absolutely critical for proper female hormone levels. And nothing has more effect on the liver than fasting and a low-carb diet. This helps women in menopause to clear out the bad forms of estrogen, which accumulate over time and lead to bad skin. And this helps women with PCOS overcome their issues and become more fertile. The problem is polycystic ovarian syndrome is strongly associated with insulin resistance. So a lot of females who have PCOS, um, they're trying to lose weight with one arm tied behind their back. Um, for them, they will generally be heavier on a particular diet than somebody without PCOS would be. And that's important to understand because it means that, uh, yes, it's not fair, but it does explain why these people might have troubles and they know that they just need to be more diligent and it sort of gives them an understanding of why they might be having troubles with their weight. Um, and the best thing you can do for polycystic ovarian syndrome is actually improve your metabolic health. We often see so levels of testosterone dramatically fall when people go on ketogenic style diets after uh, with a diagnosis of PCOS. Anything else that helps the liver will also help with these issues. While choline and inositol are commonly pointed to as supplements to help, you will get much more effect out of TMG or trimethylglycine, which I've talked about in many videos. This helps a great deal with all manner of liver damage, whether it's from long-term carb intake or even from alcoholism. While young children should probably not fast except under strict medical supervision, typically they don't need it anyway. What they really need is nutrition and getting as much healthy nutrients like protein, lysine, carnitine, carnosine, phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylserine, vitamin B12, vitamin A, and vitamin D. Healthy animal proteins and fats will yield the most nutrition here, and many of these nutrients are difficult or impossible to get in the plant kingdom, and the more carbs you have in the diet, especially processed carbs, the more out of whack your hormones are going to become, and this is going to stunt your growth. Phosphatidylcholine is also a very important nutrient for growth, and if I were not a fully developed man already, I would take probably one gram of phosphatidylcholine a day. In animal studies, supplementing phosphatidylcholine plus trimethylglycine is shown to yield the maximum growth size for animals, and that probably also applies to humans. It's also a good idea to eat eggs daily if possible. Even just one hard-boiled egg a day has large amounts of nutrient in it and can help a great deal. Choline is critical to the development of both the brain and the body, and 90% of people today are deficient. Research shows the importance of choline for the developing fetus and newborn. Fetal nutrition sets the stage for organ function in later life, so it's very important that pregnant women are consuming enough choline in their diet. Choline availability from your mother determines what, how your brain forms and how many nerve stem cells divide and how many nerve cells you have in your memory center and in your cortex, which is the area where you have functions like judgment or higher thinking processes. Cognitive development is influenced by many factors, including nutrition. Our nutritional status, including our choline status, helps support optimal brain function and academic performance in children. So the best evidence was generated by investigators at the Harvard School of Public Health, and that group measured how much choline women ate during pregnancy, first, second, third trimester. And then seven years later, they tested the children of those mothers on uh, IQ and cognitive function tests. 
and what they found was is that the children whose mothers had more choline during the last two trimesters of pregnancy did better on those IQ and memory tests. While vitamin D is talked about today mainly for its effect on the immune system, its effect on human development is critically important. Have you ever wondered what signals a man's body to have broad shoulders and narrow hips? It's vitamin D. For women, it has the opposite effect and leads to curvy hips and a smaller waist and shoulders. I hate to bring up seemingly petty issues, but most of the people I see in their 20s today don't exactly have the best developed bodies. And many of them, even if they're not obese, they look kind of like indistinct blobs. This can be life destroying, so make sure your children have plenty of healthy vitamin D foods in the diet, such as sardines, herring, and other small fish, and that they get plenty of sun exposure. Vitamin D is also critically important for human brain development, but I'll save those details for another video so I don't ramble on for too long. You may think your genetics have been set in stone, but if you are still young, then there's hope to change yourself. With proper nutrition and some fasting, you can change your future self for the better. You can increase your height and musculature. You can also increase your sexual differentiation characteristics for the better, whether you're a male or a female. And on top of all that, you can even grow more brain tissue. Yeah, you know, because everyone's got a brain. Or almost everyone.